All right, we are recording. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Schaefer, and I am the Continuing Education Consultant and the Assistant Director for CKLS, and I will be doing kind of your tech support background help. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane Bott and I'm uh, the Youth Services Assistant. I'm in charge of all this stuff behind me and beside me and everywhere. Um, if you make a request, it comes to me. Um, and hopefully, oh, I have a little, I have a fortune teller back here. Um, hopefully soon we'll be getting some of that stuff out to your libraries. It's to see all you. Crystal, would you please um, tell us where you're from and um, what your experience before becoming the Jewel Librarian was, please. Okay. Um, my name is Crystal Peters. I'm the new librarian at the Jewel Public Library. Um, I grew up in this area, Glen Elder Beloit. Um, my prior library experience was in high school. I worked at the Port Library in Beloit. For several years and I've always loved libraries and books and I've been a stay-at-home mom for a few years and then this uh, opening came up at the Jewel Public Library and they were having a hard time filling it so I thought I can probably do it and they said I can take my kids and so it works well for me so that's my experience I guess. <laughs> Wonderful we're glad that you shared with us. Tanya, can you tell us um, who you are and where you're from, please? I'm Tanya Underwood. I'm from Burr Oak. Um, past experience was retail management. And then I got married and I moved out here. And um, I worked for my mother-in-law and father-in-law in the vineyard until the tornado happened and I was on the board here and I put in for the position. Super, having board experience helps so much with um, running the library and um, wearing, wearing both hats makes a, makes a big difference. So we're glad, that, um, we're glad that you joined us this morning. Angel, can you um, tell us who you are, where you're I'm Angel. I'm from Delphus. We've been living in Delphus for about 21 years this past May. I've done everything from, I don't know, substitute taught first through sixth graders while we lived in Georgia when my husband was military. I owned my own restaurant for about 12 years and decided I was going to retire, ha ha, when my grandkids started coming along and I decided they were more important than making money. And then everybody kept begging me to come help them out because they can't find good help these days. And then the library board here begged me for about oh, a year and a half or two years, somewhere in there to come to work and they finally ground me down and I came in thinking, yeah, part-time job, this will work perfect, only got to drive three blocks to work, it's all good, and then Miss Patty and Miss Marabeth hit me. It's not an 18-hour-a-week job, I don't care what they say, the brain's going constantly, and it's always wanting to explode, but if it wasn't for the kids, well, I'd be out of here. Well, Patty and Mary Beth hit you probably like a truck. <laughs> Very much so, more like a semi. <laughs> you know, um, we make an impression if nothing else. And then uh, Laura, I don't know if you're able to um, speak um, or if you, I hope that you're able to see us. If you uh, would like to share a little bit in the chat, we'll be watching for that. Um, Laura is the new librarian at the Ray Hobson Memorial Library in Republic. In um, um, three of your cases, you are solo librarians. Um, Burr Oak, Delphus, and Ray Hobson are all um, solo. And um, Crystal, how many hours a week does Marsha work at Jewel? Uh, she works eight to 10 hours. 
you know, we have a couple weeks that are a little different. So, um, so you're all feeling the same thing and you're all in similar size um, communities. I imagine the, um, there's not a whole bunch of money just, you know, rolling in <laughs> either in your paycheck or in your library budgets. So um, today we just want to do a couple of things to give you um, just a, a little sense of, of where we are. My name is Patty Collins and I have been the um, youth services consultant for the Central Kansas Library System for nearly eight years. Um, I come with all kinds of library experience. I was head of youth services in two different locations, um, Dodge City and Junction City. I was an assistant director at a public library in Junction City. Um, I've been a school librarian. I've also been the head of circulation. I've been a shelver. I've been a page. Um, the only thing that I have never done is work in a solo library. And that's why I have the most amazing assistant at all. Diane, please tell us about your former experience. All right, I spent um, almost 20 years, 16 years as a solo librarian. So I know what it's like. I've been there. Um, I quit the um, solo librarian business to go upstairs to Great Bend Public Library as head of circulation. I worked there for three years and um, Patty and I developed a friendship um, and she convinced me, coerced me, I'm not sure how you put it, um, to be, to come and apply for her um, assistant position and I haven't regretted it one bit. Um, this morning someone walked out of their office and said, are you guys sure you're just drinking coffee this morning? Um, it's it's a very rare day that we don't um, have fun here. And those days are really bad when we, do, when we don't have fun. So, uh, but I have been in your position, so I completely understand. And if you just need to talk it out, I'll listen to you and probably guide you back to Patty for the grown up stuff, but you know how it is. I thrive on being the grown-up, but I also thrive on being a kid. Um, you're not going to find a more fierce um, child advocate um, in, in Kansas. I, I would say that I will fight for kids for all sorts of things. Um, as we get in, the, I get the opportunity to actually do the training. Um, as, as we leave our space soon, as the consultants are allowed out on the road again, there is a, there is a, um, um, a training circle that you that you as, as new librarians all get. Uh, Mary Beth goes first because Mary Beth has the grown up work that she has to do. She has to let you know how your money comes from. She has to show you about opportunities that CKLS can give you through grant funding and certainly support. And um, she makes sure that you're running a legally established library. And that's the first thing that you really have to know. And then you'll get a visit from Michael who will show you the ins and outs of using Pathfinder Central Koha, whatever you call it, it's what it's your catalog system that's got your patrons and your books in it. And Michael will come out and, and spend some time doing that. Um, um, he may or may not come with um, Liz, who is our cataloger, uh, but they will they will show you the ins and out of how to run your system, um, placing holds, filling holds, those kinds of things. Um, the next visit that you'll get is from Kathy Ron, who's going to show you how to use interlibrary loan. Um, you might have heard the word share it. Maybe not yet, but maybe you have. And there were, and um, that's using the statewide interlibrary loan. And Kathy Ron will show you how to do that. And did I get all the trainers? Oh, and then Andy. Andy is our IT guy, and he's right now running on emergency runs only. So he is on the road, but it is um, truly emergency situations. <laughs> yeah, lightning strikes your building, wipes out your entire system. <laughs> um, and he can remote in and do a lot of things from his, his um, laptop um, in the office and also on the road and, and fix some things. And then once everybody else is gone, then, then I'm the very last one. And it's, and Diane, Diane just whispered, saving the best to last. Basically the reason I go last is sometimes I muddy the waters because I bring you, I bring boxes of all kinds of cool things that we own in our collection 
that we want to show you, but um, we show you how to program with them. And what happens is we forget how to run a library because we get so <laughs> excited about all this programming stuff. And so we decided that, that I should be last. Well, in the midst of all this, many of you started just as they were starting their trainings. And so you're still sitting here with no, um, no knowledge of what you're supposed to do. Now, I don't know if, if any or all of you are moms, but a lot of your mom training is gonna come right into programming. Um, you, um, the fact that you decided to take a library job know, knew that you had to deal with people. And if you have mom or teacher or Sunday school or whatever experience, all of those things roll together. When we meet in person one-on-one, -on -one, I'll ask all of those kinds of things because that helps me know. Like Angel shared that she was a substitute teacher. Um, Crystal shared that she's a mom. That information I use and I help you figure out the way um, to make programming the easiest. So there are two, currently for this current year, there are two um, financial components that CKLS can provide. And I just need to go over those briefly so you know um, why some of this training is important and why programming is important. The Summer Library Program um, is a standard and that's part of one of the seven standards that provides some of the, the money that you get through CKLS. And it's got a few silly components, but those silly components um, don't all exist just for me. Um, we get heavily funded through a grant through the federal government. And so I need to make sure that all my ducks are in a row. And so that's why I have to ask some questions and, and ask you to do some things. And a lot of those come in your summer library program um, evaluation at the end. Um, that's a, that's $300, that's, that's a $300 standard. The other portion is this year, there is still a story time grant. There is a story time grant. Gail's gonna pop in. Good morning. And you'll notice that my mask matches my <laughs> shirt. I may be a princess, but I've got the matching one. Anyway, good morning. I was gonna clarify that you said it was a $300 standard. Of course, it's a yeah. one of the seven standards that's associated with your base grant if you miss that standard it is actually i think you're all gateway libraries so it would actually be a deduction of 510 dollars thank you mary beth um gail was um gail every morning comes by our desks and says hello with her coffee and someday she um, she has something on her mind and she gets to sit and visit and she's like, what are you all doing back there? Because we're in an unusual space today. Um, so um, um, the Summer Library Program is, is one of the seven standards. Um, currently, there is a story time grant for the 2020 year and that requires a certain number of story times that need to be completed. And, and, uh, um, and then um, there's a flyer that needs to be created you'll have enough time to get those story times in in the fall. We do understand that with um, COVID-19, those spring story times that may have gotten started may have never happened. They might have been reported as though they were supposed to get started. And, and that's okay. Um, you're not going to be penalized for something you could not possibly do. So in terms of summer library, why do we program in a library at all? Um, I'm gonna be very honest with you in terms of library programming, you're promoting your collection, you're getting people in the door and you're creating a community. There is no right or wrong in library programming. It does not have to look like the library down the road. It doesn't have to look like New York Public Library. I mean, it has to look like what fits your community. So that might be, you know, you might be a heavy craft community. You might be a heavy story community. You might be a book, read, a book group community. Um, you'll start to know what that looks like. Um, and the one, and probably the, the, the single thing that you need to know about programming, just because you try it once and it looks like a failure, doesn't mean never try it again. Because you don't know that the day that you planned the thing for wasn't the day that uh, the patriarch in town passed away and that the time you planned it for was the day of the funeral and everybody else is somewhere else. Or it's the day of the homecoming parade because we're on our way to to state football or Diane is, is throwing out other things you know Cub Scout Jamboree the first day of vacation Bible school 
all of those things, you're, you're competing with everything. Um, the deal is, if library programming isn't fun for you, particularly, your patrons are going to know, but particularly your kids are going to know. They're going to be able to look at your face and go, she doesn't want to be here either. <laughs> and, and they're going to sense that. Um, but it's more than bringing joy to what you're doing. And it's more than, than promoting your collection. It's about creating a community. You will find as you leave some of the children's programming and start to allow yourself family and adult programming that um, you're going to find people in town that want to lead these things for you. So the, the key about programming is it does not have to be librarian led or librarian driven. Um, the library can still present something and it not have to be you doing it. So in some places, um, story time's done by um, volunteers in their community, but it's managed through the library. And so um, don't hesitate as you're out seeing things or you hear me talk about things to think bigger than you are. So um, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of, of, of ways to get started. In, in summer library, in regular years, this is kind of what the expectation is. You choose a period of time and you plan an activity for on a consistent basis. It might be every other week, you might do a story reading or you might have a activity in the park, but it's on a consistent basis. It might be every other Thursday at 10 or it might be um, the first Saturday of each month um, at 10 o'clock in the morning at two o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. Um, and then there's usually a reading component of it. Um, it can be using a reading chart, it can be an online, um, an online program like Reader Zone that we've talked about a little bit before, or it can be the old fashioned thing that we might have used when we were kids. This is one of the, the reading charts, and this one's a dot chart. You determine how much time and you mark the dots. Um, or the traditional chart with the, with the lines on it that are the, um, right down the books that you read. Miss Patty has one rule. It doesn't matter what you read, it counts. You get to decide that in your library, but in my world, a kid reading a cereal box, at least they're reading something. Um, the other things, those are a couple examples of printed materials. And then you may, and, and if, you, if you have not seen these materials, they're somewhere in your library and we'll help you figure out where they are. There's um, probably some packets with some bookmarks in it, um, some reading posters and things. Um, those are materials that you get at no cost to your library through the grant that I had mentioned before. Um, the reading component can, can be associated with an incentive or it doesn't have to be. That um, you hear prizes or no prizes comes up a lot. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to do that. It doesn't have to be associated with prizes. You don't really have to require them to do it. Um, summer library program is the key word. You notice I don't use the word summer reading and you're not going to hear that from me very often um, because not every person is motivated to visit the library to read. They might be going there because it's a cool place to visit in the summertime and I'm talking the physically cool in terms of their, the temperature not at their house. Um, it, may be, um, it may be a place of safety. Um, you may know families in your community that being at home is not a safe place and so they, they're there um, um, because of the safety aspect. Some people may come to the library for the, I just need to see another human being aspect. And after three months away, we might have learned that, how important that, that connection is. And this is not my ideal way to train, but this is what we have right now. Um, so it's, it's thinking of the reasons that people visit your community. So um, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm going to pull up, I'm going to share my screen and then pull up an example of a bingo card that one of our librarians did. And instead of having um, a requirement for tracking, she used a bingo card to encourage her um, users to play. And so I'm going to open this up. Okay, this is a standard, um, whoops, there we go. This is a standard. Um, template that I pulled off of a website. You see they have a large graphic. Their summer reading kickoff. Very simple, has their beginning and end dates. The thing that's missing that I need on this flyer is um, full library name, full library address, full library telephone number. 
I know when it's going to happen. I know what it is. Your flyer may be this simple, and it may say, come to the library to register, come to the library to pick up your chart, some activity of that nature. Let me put this one down and go here. Okay. Um, this is summer writing, summer reading bingo from the Otis Public Library. And I'm going to scoot down so you can see the card. She wrote the things that fit. You're not seeing the card. If you just shared one thing, it's not going to show everything. If you share your whole desktop, then it'll show what you see on your screen. Okay. Let me get rid of that one. Okay. You're back to seeing my desktop. You're back to seeing me. I have too many windows open, but that is my life. Okay. Okay. Now, can you see a bingo card? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is um, the Otis Community Library's bingo card. And what it is is she used a, a blank card and dropped it in. And you'll see that some of them say read, but um, like in the second row, um, a classic you've been meaning to read. Farther across, complete a puzzle, a crossword, or a word search. Some of those items she's provided in a packet. Some of them she has sent a link out to allow um, users to be able to do some activities at home. This declutter your spaces at the bottom. Explore a new author. <laughs> and Diane says, clean your room. Um, so. Um, you see, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, but that very first block is very interesting, and she wrote this in the midst of COVID. Challenge negative thoughts by using positive self-talk. Um, so these boxes can be filled in with whatever you want. Um, the very bottom, it says surprise someone with a card or a piece of artwork. So you can see that um, it doesn't have to necessarily be all about the book. Um, it can it can conclude it can include art. Um, it can include <laughs> what is with me today. It can include other ways to um, um, experience the world without it being um, without it having a time activity or associated with it. Think in terms of of uh, volunteering at the teenager level. That's a component that has recently become a large part of Summer Library. Um, Diane, I'm gonna ask you to open up and show some of our sources of information, and then I will do collaborative after. So I'm going to stop share. Okay, Diane is Diane Walk is talking herself through sharing her screen. <laughs> um, so um, we had three sets of documents that we shared out earlier. Um, one thing that you may not know that CKLS can do for you is we can print um, documents for you. We can also um, laminate things. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. All right, both of you are muted. Diana is, is unmuting herself. Nope. Oh, my gosh. Unmute me. There it is again. Oh, there it is. I, uh, nope. I muted myself again. I unmuted you, Diane. Quit muting yourself. <laughs> okay, you got it. This is the joy of um, not knowing what the heck you're doing. <laughs> okay, so do you all see the um, collaborative summer screen? Yes. We're seeing your document. Really? <laughs> it's really. Oh, so if you 
share a specific program, it's just going to show that program. So if you selected your document, it's just going to show that. You need to share your desktop screen so it shows whatever is on your screen. No share. Sure. It's not just me. <laughs> nope. Yes. Okay. Now we're seeing it. Yes. I have to, I have to learn by doing. Don't talk me through it. I have to learn by doing. Okay. So this is something that the collaborative summer library program sent out after they realized that um, um, in-house programming was going to probably be non-existent. And so they have this whole document full of, um, the first part is why you do the things you do and how to do it by your advertising. It gives it some statistics. And then you get into the fun stuff, which gives you, this, this section is early lit, early literacy it's in the air i swear it's in the air neither patty or i can talk today um and it just gives different ideas of diane if you're scrolling you're you print them off so make um, sure that you send them home with the kids I didn't... sorry diane when you scroll it mutes you so make sure you scroll and then talk I, I remember that from another thing. <laughs> um, so um, you can print these off and send them home. With and to, um, it has four different sections. It has children's, um, teen, early lit and um, family. Um, I'm not going to, it muted me. I'm not going to go through the whole, it muted me, didn't it? No, no, you're talking. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole document and I have, for some reason, I shared that out on an email this morning. So you should be able to just click on that link that um, came through email this morning. Um, to get in and see this particular document. Um, okay. Share screen. Hello, Laura. It's nice to see your face. I was driving. Um, summer had volleyball reconditioning or whatever the summer conditioning in Belleville, so. <laughs> Okay. While Diane is pulling up the second document, basically I call the document she just shared the mini manual. The Collaborative Summer Library Program is where we get all of our stuff from. And each library in Kansas has a, uh, is paid to, to be, be a, a member, member of this um, Collaborative Summer Library Program. And you don't have to pay anything for it because that's part of that um, federal grant money that we use um, for the materials. And um, it also pays for every library to have a manual. And this year in response, they made a quick mini manual that was easy for you to um, print off. And so if there's something in the mini manual or in the next packet that Diane wants to show you um, that they have, um, um, those materials could be printed off by us and sent to you via courier. Um, on a regular on a regular system, we're going to say we need we need a couple of weeks. Um, if you get things to us immediately, we're going to do it as quickly as we can and get it back to you. And so, if you need thirty copies of a crown, then we'll make those copies on cardstock and send them to you right away. But um, we're able to um, um, print, and we also are able to laminate things that are um, that are not one-off things. That's actually you know. So the summer library program poster you're going to take down in a couple of months and throw away, but something that, but something that you're going to put up and keep up for a long time, or like um, Diane's going to show you a, a book walk here in a few minutes, and some of those kinds of things are things that we laminate. 
I'm going to give her back the, the con and she's going to show you the packet from the Penworthy Book Company. Uh, Patty received an email one day and she gets really excited over these, um, <laughs> these awesome things that she finds. And this one just, um, Penworthy Books is um, a company then in uh, Minnesota that um, uh, they, take, they take quality paperback books and put them in hardback binding. I'm sure a lot of you probably have some of these books um, in your libraries, but they put together some of the cutest crafts, um, crowns, jokes, mad libs, story stones. Um, this is, I never, you know, this is something that um, I did with my kids when they were growing up, only we didn't use rocks. We used um, the tiny little figurines. I had a shoe and a chair and a, and a frog and a prince and a, and a um, little, um, uh, now I'm drawing the blank, little tiny cars. Uh, and we put that all in a bag and my kids would draw out an object and that would be the start of the story. And then the next one would draw out a little object and that'd be the, and that's the idea behind stones is you tell a story by what you, what in this case stone you draw out. Who doesn't love unicorn slime? Will we be so these can be printed off as packets um, and sent home with your parents. Um, what we're hearing from a lot of the parents, from a lot of the librarians, that their parents are saying, "We don't want to do any more online. We've done that for we've done that for three months. We don't want you to do put anything else online." Um, so this would make a fun packet to send home. There again, completely printable. So um, the last thing I will show you is um, ideas that Patty and I spent three months gathering and I had the pleasure of um, actually making some of this stuff while we were at home. Um, we sent this document out earlier, but we'll try to send another link out. And Angel, did you have a question? Um, well, I was asking if we'd be able to print. Did I un? Yes, Angel, pages, go ahead. Certain pages ourselves without having to get a hold of you guys. Yes, absolutely. In any document that that we share, um, we'll make it very clear if that item is not a reproducible, if it is one for you to use in the library only. But, but if we send it to you, we're going to say you can do your own printing. And if, uh, um, so uh, um, in that case, you're welcome to do your own printing. If you need us to do it for you, we can make, you know, up to 100 copies of something. So if you need, this is a very unusual situation. If you see a 17 page document and you want six of those pages and you have a hundred kids in your community that you need to print for. And I know that's a joke for any of you, um, but I'm, I'm happy to do that for you. <laughs> yeah, you'll all laugh a little, but it's true. Um, but we wanna make sure that you have the materials that you need. Uh, uh, some of our libraries are doing a take home packet where at the very beginning in the library that Diane is, happens to be the current um, treasurer for the Bison Library, which is the library she spoke of earlier, you know, she, she made a packet in a, in a folder and every child got the folder when they stopped by for lunch one day at the at the school lunch program and that's their entire summer library it's it's all included in that thing so they don't have to go online to do anything if they don't want um, but there are links in there to to take them to go watch science or watch art. diana's got the con again i am getting the hang of this that scares me um so like I said, we, our time at home was spent, um, we shared back and forth through um, 
chat, a Facebook chat and Google chat a lot. Hey, I found this cool thing. Hey, I found this cool thing. Ding, ding, ding. And our phones would be dinging back and forth. Um, so this is what I did with all of those um, links as I tried to put them together in semi, some type of order. Um, I'm sitting here looking at the, um, the author sharing read alouds. Some of those may have been taken down now um, because a lot of that stuff was available while um, school was out. Um, some of those companies are starting to say, okay, school's no longer in session. We're, we're not giving away our stuff for free anymore. So um, if these links don't work, um, my apologies, our apologies. Um, we have not taken time to go through and check all of these again. Um, but we put together, it looks like four pages of it, it, just some awesome crafts that you can do at home. Um, we went ahead and included some online links to watch. Um, I was trying to think here. What did we? Oh, Mo Willems did the um, lunch doodles. Um, I don't. I don't know if they're still available or not. But um, some of the things they they are online, but a lot of the stuff is. Um, uh, just little little crafts to do with stuff you probably have at home. We included a lot of um, toilet paper tube activities because evidently we were going to go through a lot of toilet paper. Um, so those you can actually click on the link in the document if you open it up online. Um, I suggested that we don't print this off because it it's going to be changing. We're still, I added a couple of new things the other day. So um, we did test some of them and others we just said, hey, this is really cool. Let's try this. So there's that. So um, some of you were may, perhaps are able to attend the um, summer library program workshop that we did back in March. Um, Diane and I have had the pleasure the last um, few years, and, and this is my, I think this will be my seventh year, of doing a, a program at the Kansas Library Association Conference to prepare everyone for summer library. If you were on yesterday's meeting, um, Gail made uh, the decision that the summer library program workshop, um, and hopefully um, COVID-19 is going to allow this, we're going to actually do it in November here at CKLS provided um, social distancing and math gathering um, limitations allow us to do that. Basically, we want you to be, have the opportunity to be a little more prepared, especially if we do have that um, um, uncertainty of winter coming and flu season that may be COVID and we don't know or whatever, all of these things are so uncertain. And we also wanted um, you to be able to be um, ahead of things and we know as as former programmers ourselves Mary Beth Gail Diane and I have all been programmers and if you're waiting until the month before you need it that's too late so we hope that you're able to get these materials sooner and get these ideas sooner so so um, Diane and I have been presenting and so we're already thinking about 2021 so it's it's a little hard for us to to still be stuck in Prairie Princess World because we've moved on to Tales and Tales which is all kinds of animal things um, but we are here to help you. So I, earlier I had mentioned that the thing that we had showed was the mini manual. And, um, and I just want to introduce you to one page um, just so you are um, um, at least have the knowledge of, of that page. It is a collaborative summer library program. And I am going to open up and just give you a, 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 just a quick look of their page. I am logged in. Each library has a login. You might not know where yours is, and if that's the case, then we'll we'll get you a new one um, by contacting um, the actual company. And you see, there's. Can you see my screen? Okay. Um, you'll see things like membership information, um, manual downloads. Your manual comes in um, either on a USB or on an online code, um, but you'll see that they were responsive, and this red link is that. 
summer 2020 additional resources. This is their mini manual. Um, the regular manual is 250 pages. They created 250 other pages that were printable. And a lot of the pages that are in your manual, and you might have old print manuals in your in your building somewhere um, that that have links to things, but that wasn't the world we were living in when those print manuals were made. So the other thing that you'll find off of this page is the shopping site. Um, you'll see um, if you visited um, the workshop a few months ago, all the cool prizes and things, and some of the prizes that Diana has been giving away this week. They came from the Collaborative Summer Library Program. And that's the t-shirts that we were wearing that day. T-shirts actually that we're wearing today. We're wearing our Imagine Your Story. Um, the um, uh, things like um, crowns, the, the rollout table paper that you got when you came to the, the workshop. Those kinds of things come from, from their company. Some of those things um, are things that you can can purchase for your library for prizes, and some of them would be things like the table paper that you might use as, a, as an activity. So I wanted to introduce you to this. Um, as with everything from the CKLS world, it's all suggestion. Um, what I want you to leave with today is a couple of pieces of information. Um, oh, good. We really put all those things in the chat. She's so helpful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, um, You'll need to figure out how to count your people. If you're just doing a, um, if you're doing a, some version of online and some version of, of in-person, online challenging is a little more challenging to count. Your in-person is actually how many bodies come to whatever activity that you do. Um, if you do a story reading, you count your bodies and you, um, the best you can by different age groups. And um, a little bit later this week or first thing next week, I'm going to send out the new evaluation documents that you can look at. Um, you count the number of activities that you did and who's in the room. Um, you do the same thing with online and it might just be a matter of, uh, of a guess of how many people might be in that space. If you don't know, count them as a, a child and an adult because in my world, children can't drive. So um, they can't drive a computer either. And so somebody has got to help them access that online activity. And then, um, the, the other part of it is um, we need to prove that you're doing it. And, and that's, a, that's a terrible word to say, but the only way that when I go out and travel in the summer, the only way I know where to stop to see what's happening is by the flyers that you send. Marketing your library is the reason we ask for the flyers. If you're not sharing what you're doing, no one's going to know. I had a, I had a, a mentor um, librarian tell me once, if you don't toot your own horn now and then, someone's gonna come along and throw sand in it. And I treat that in the same terms as I think of as marketing. If you're not telling somebody and then you're disappointed when you're all alone, some of that is our, our own situation. Um, frankly, until um, Crystal clicked in at, at, um, at 9.50 this morning, I told Mary Beth, I said, I think you're just going to be sitting in your office at home a little bit longer and we're going to have a chat and then, then, then I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> um, because I frankly did not know if, if you would all find time to show up. Um, I, um, I know that, that um, um, I know that's important for you to be here, but I don't know if, um, if you all have the time to be here. And another important element of uh, your marketing flyer is to have all your library information. Your your regular library patrons are going to know you know how to get a hold of you, but somebody new to town, um, somebody visiting is not going to know that information. So make sure you make your flyer based on the person that's new to town. So give your phone number, give your full full number, all all ten digits. Give your full address. Give your full email. Um, the full name of your library. There are li libraries that are really close to each other. So I think of Glasgow and Delphus. If you just say library, um, people are going to both the Delphus and the Glasgow Library and even the Minneapolis Library. So you want to make sure that they know which library it's at so they don't go to the wrong one. And in the case of both Baroque and Republic, you're running the Nebraska line. So if you say library and somebody uses both, they might not even know which state they're in. 
and certainly, I mean, I always allow kids to double dip. I'm like, if you use more than one, by all means, they might have better prizes down the road, <laughs> or maybe more, more, uh, more ice cream cubes. Okay. okay, there was a question in the chat that says, "Do we count presenters and adults that are just watching?" Library people don't count. So if you are doing a story reading activity in the park, the person, um, the librarian does not count. However, if the story reading is being done by um, three people from the high school, yeah, they count, whether that's a teacher or a child. Um, so that presenter does count if it's the traveling magician or the musician. Um, it counts if that presenter is someone besides you. So. Um, in case of if it's a if it's a high school um, acting troupe, they would count as teenagers in your in your counts. If it is the drama coach, however, doing it, they count as an adult. And yes, you count your adults that are watching, whether they're live or or on a on a um, online platform. Um, everybody that's in the room gets counted, but the librarian. What about and board if, members? Yes. They, they count as well. Unless they're actively working, they're actually presenting, they would count as well. The, the, the librarian is the only person that doesn't, it doesn't count. And in this room, if, if Gail were to ask me who would be here, um, I don't count in the group, but the, the other six of you do. That would be how many people showed up. I don't count. So um, on, the, on the, the evaluation, there is a category for um, preschoolers, a category for kindergarten through sixth grade, or that says grade school ages, and you your school might be K to four. Um, and then there's a, a teen or young adult. It I think it says both, and then adult, and that's considered anyone over the age of 18. If you can't guess, put them in grade school age, because that's where the target of library programming for children lies. Um, your preschool story time, it might actually say preschool story time. If the big kids come, they get marked as big kids. And if the adults come, they get marked as adults. Um, keeping track of the number of activities that you do. And um, the, I'm going to send out a form with all of the, the free links that Diane has um, at the end of the day that will have, um, will show you if you do your library activity inside the library or if you do it as an outreach or if it's done online. Would it be helpful to see um, how the State Library asks for that information? So they see what you're asking when you say you count adults as adults for a program? Yes? Absolutely. Okay. All right, let me pull that up and then I'll share my screen. If I can get to the right place, okay. Mary Beth is in charge of, of um, the money. She's also in charge of helping you figure out how to complete your um, um, system grant questionnaire and your public library survey. At the All right, can you see my screen? Okay, so this is a state library website and I'm going to go to librarians and I'm just going to hover and then I'm going to go over to the Kansas Public Library Survey and State Report. Okay, and then I'm going to click on Kansas Counting Opinions. And if you helped at all with um, the January Kansas, Lib um, Kansas Public Library State Report, this may look familiar to you. But I just wanted to remind you what that, um, what that, uh, that question looks like, what they're asking for. So since Delphus is here, I'm going to go, go there. And we're going to go to Part 11, Circulation and Programs. Okay, so we're here in programming. So um, you'll see that um, it's asking for summer reading program and early literacy, how many programs you had, and then the attendance regardless of age. So you can see how to count that it's asking for here. So if you had a program that was geared for K through K through six, um, which are children, um, six through 11. This is the, what they want to know, how many programs you had for that age group and then how many people attended regardless of age. Okay. 
So it, it's a little, it's a little different than what you would think you need to count because it's saying how many people showed up at your attendance, no matter what age group there are. And then they want, um, and then they total it all up down here for you at the bottom. Okay. But you see in the one place it says regardless of age and then at the bottom it says total of all children. Yes. <laughs> And so, so that's where that's where keeping the, those separate counts comes from. And and the other um, youth services consultants and I across the state have determined from previous conversations with the state library that they want the breakouts um, and um, uh, across the board for all programming um, to make it easier for for them to do um, um, some data analysis. The other thing that we do know is they're adding COVID-19 questions to this year's report. And some of those are going to be related to programming. We understand that there are some things you may not have been counting because you had no idea that you were supposed to be. And that's certainly okay. Um, if you've heard me talk about this at all, I keep saying that there's an asterisk on, on the year 2020 because the numbers won't look like your numbers for 2019 and they won't look like your numbers for 2021 and um, you cannot do this wrong providing anything at all is the right answer and so um, it your motivation by showing up here made a difference i know um, one of you has already got a flyer in and has already got a, a program started and it's a, it's a little more comfortable rolling on some of you might not have a place to begin and so um, when this is over then that's when we need to have those individual phone conversations so i can i can answer some specific questions and get you started any other questions about numbers Most of my programs are going to have all the kids at the same time. So when it's asking for which programs for which age group, if I have five programs and I'm inviting all age groups, when it asks for how many programs for six to 11 year olds and how many 12 to 18 year olds, do I use the same number? since I'm not separating them? That, that uh, program number goes in the children six to 11 category. So it would be zeroed out in the preschool and zeroed out in the, the team, even though all of those ages are attending because your target would be that six to 11. With preschool story time in the fall, your target, the, the number would be, it would appear in the, in the um, first to five category. Does that make sense? Did I muddy that up? I think it connected. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll only count the program once. And if it's for all ages, we're recommending to go in the children six to 11, because that's the age group that is covered with the grant and that's the target age group. So you only okay. count the program once and you only account the attendance for that program once. So on the attendance, I wouldn't put, even though I'm putting, even though I have birth to five-year-olds at the program, I'm not going to count them in the attendance. No, you're going to count them, but you're going to count them all in the children six to 11 section. So you're going to say that you had one program. It was for a children six to 11 and then the attendance was 25 and that's zero through 95 or zero through 115 however old your oldest person is there because they okay. want the attendance regardless of age you want to keep a count of the children and that's children zero to 18 that attended because it is asking here at the bottom total children okay. it's asking that breakout there but in this in this section up here, it just wants the total attendance. Okay. I'm, um, this is Patty again. I am working with um, one of my counterparts later this morning, and she is the one who works directly with data collection with the state library. 
to finalize our summer library program form. And it will, it will show you um, um, what that evaluation looks like. Um, it is best because we know what the trend is going to be for federal reporting is they're going to ask for those divisions that under five, six to 11, 12 to 18 and, and or 12 to 17 and 18 and older. We know that that is coming from the federal level within two years. And so we've already put that on the evaluation. So we're going, we're going to say, regardless of what you saw in the state report just a moment ago, that your thinking needs to start to get to go to separate those categories, to start to train yourself to look, okay, that's probably a preschooler. Oh, that's definitely a grade school age kid. Does that make sense? Okay, Hear, hearing not, then that will that will create new questions for you next week, and, and that's okay. How are we supposed to prove ourselves? Pardon? How are we supposed to prove that we, you said we had to prove that we did it. How, I mean, if we're doing it online and stuff, just because we're, re I'm using the reader uh, zone and doing a board game on. Okay, so um, reader zone, actually all of your reader zone accounts are um, reachable through me and the state library, of course, because they, they um, are the ones, funding via program, they can see use of that program. And um, one of the pieces of proof is just that the flyer that you sent to me, this is what we intend to do. And the other thing is, is, is we can market things all day long, but we can't make people come. And so that's why I say the, the first time you do a program and it's unsuccessful may be truly because no one shows, but that's not the meaning to never do it again. Um, in the case of, um, the activities that you might be um, doing online, that might be an activity that we see on your Facebook page. We see um, engagement because Diane and I are following your Facebook pages. We're following your websites. Um, I don't need proof beyond your evaluation numbers are gonna tell me I did four activities and 26 people came. That's the proof. And that's the proof that comes through to the end of the year. And I wanted to kind of reiterate Patty's point. If you hold a program, you're there, you're in the building, the doors are open, and nobody turns up, that still counts as a program. If you cancel beforehand and, you know, it's not there, then it doesn't count as a program. But if you are, or if you post it on Facebook, let's do the online ones too. If you present the program, it counts. This is such a funny time. Um, all of those story times that were planned that never happened, there's no way that we are going to um, punish you for something you couldn't control. You can't bring bodies to the library. And those, um, and those opportunities for, you know, I, I recommended that you didn't need another thing to do to learn how to do an online story program when Maybe you haven't done a live one yet. Um, so, so maybe that wasn't important. When we were sending out a ton of links of things that were going to live for a long time or that live all the time anyway, um, where you can go out and have those things, that, those things that are available. Now, the difference between bringing in that the, they, they have a program called Stories in Space, where kids can watch at any time or you can send links out and say, hey, watch the cool Stories in Space thing. Those are shares. Those, those are not programs. Those are shares that you can put through your website. But you can say for this summer library um, that because we're not able to meet together to do stories, um, each week I'm going to post a new, new story from space. I hope you can watch that with your family. And you post it on your, your, on your Facebook page. You don't have to do the program to you don't have to prove the numbers because that's going to that's going to do your facebook view to your um to seeing the 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 comment but you're not going to know whether or not they watched it 
and that's something somebody else created. But you do have, you are providing content. And right now, that's one of the things that we can do is we can shift content out, either through the website or through our Facebook page. Um, we can shift content out. And that doesn't have to be content you have to create because right now it's just enough for you to clean your bathrooms, quarantine your books, and help the few people that can come into your doors because your building is small. That's enough for us. Next year will look very, very different. I am hopeful that we'll have an online, uh, a, an online component of our summer library program, but an awesome, real, legitimate summer library program. And you're going to see Diane and I by November, we're gonna be rolling in with all kinds of magic that you're, you're gonna be planned and ready in, in February. You're gonna be like, okay, where are the kids? When's this gonna happen? Um, because you're gonna feel that excitement. And I think, I, I truly believe that by being hit so hard for this year that next year, you're, everybody's gonna knock it out of the park and kids will be clamoring to come and spend days with you because right now they, they frankly just cannot. And so um, I'll leave you with the most important thing. If you haven't heard her say it yet, and you haven't heard us say it yet, the most important thing in the library are each of you. You can fill it with books, programs. You can get every cool puppet in the world. But if you're not a part of that room, it means nothing. The kids will come to see you. And right now they will want to crawl all over you. They'll want to hug you. They'll want to draw you pictures till the day is long because you're the magic that the library is. And if you go to Walmart in the next town over and somebody sees you and they're gonna say, hey, library, and you're gonna turn around because you know they're talking to you. And the words, that's my story, lady. Hey, I know you. All of those things will become so important in that trip to the local quick shop or that, or that um, walking down the street or playing in the park with your own children. Somebody's gonna see you and you're gonna realize how vital you are to that building. You become the face of that place. I got and hit at a funeral last week. See, <laughs> the first time I was out with my assistant shopping 23, 24 years ago now, and she was the outreach story lady and some kid walked up to us in in walmart and she said hey library and we both giggled and this mom was like who is that and well how do you know her because she had never the mom had never been to the library but the child knew her from an a story program at a local daycare and you are what's important so you cannot do this wrong don't beat yourself up um do what you can. Um, I'm going to send an email just to the this little group of people that have the links that Diane shared. Uh, and I'm also going to share um, an example of four or five different flyers that will kind of give you an idea of what what we're looking for. If you are not a flyer maker, I have templates that you can use. Um, I'm looking for full name, address, and phone number. It attractive in some nature. Think that we're we're trying to draw a child to that information. And so, however, whatever your program name is called, um, and then it needs to have your inclusive dates. And that might be July 1 to July 31. It might be July 15 to, to August 1st. There's no length of time. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, good people. <laughs> um, there's no there's no requirement in length of time that you have to do this in. There's no requirement of how many things you have to do. Do do your summer program with enthusiasm and with passion for what you do, and you're gonna be great. I'm gonna skip back a minute when you were talking about the springtime programs that got canceled because of COVID. Mayor Beth, you were saying they were planned. Do we count them or is that going to be part of the COVID questions? How many programs were deleted because of COVID or? 
you so you're not going to be penalized for it. So we had some libraries that did a story time grant for the spring and then they weren't able to do those story times. So what we're asking or a programming grant. So what we're asking for those libraries is to do what they can for the rest of the year kind of thing. Um, I, it's not going, it's not going to, I don't think they're going to ask what kind of uh, programs got canceled. I don't think that's something they're going to count, but because they didn't have those, it's not a number, it's not a statistic that's probably going to be counted. It's I actually got a benefit in probably, to you that, go ahead, Angel. I got in like four or five programs before we got closed down. Okay. But I had the rest of my spring already programmed. Yeah. yeah. You had it <laughs> planned. You're not going to be, we're not going to get after you because you couldn't do the other seven or whatever left you had. We, we understand that there was no way for you to do those programs. So in terms of, of you asked the question um, about the, um, about how to count it. In terms of the programs that you did not present, those would not appear as programs presented on your state report because you don't want to put them on there because then that makes your attendance look lower because your averages uh, yeah. would, it would, it would blow your averages. However, Anything that you wrote for the spring, if it's still applicable, save it for the fall mm -hmm. because I know you, you're still going to do it in the fall no matter what. So right. save your, yeah. save your save best those. stuff for the fall. But um, the, the programs that, the program that you are prepared, your, your door is open, you're ready to do, and no one shows, that is counted as a, as a program. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can decide whether or not you want to count that as a, as a, as a come with a zero or do I just want to take that off and not worry about that? You get to decide that. Mm -hmm. If you're required it's for, for something to do a, a one adult program and you present it and no one comes, then, then you want to count it. You would get that credit. So, and those are those, those are the specific consulting questions that you call me up and say, what do I do with this? And those are the questions <laughs> that we answer. Um, so yeah. and I are glad to take those kinds of things. The story time grant came with a stipulation of 14 for Gateway Library, 14 um, story time sessions. So right. that's why it's important to count the ones that you your doors were open and you held it and nobody came up. That's important to count for those. But for the ones where it was canceled, we realized that um, for the spring, you weren't able to get your 14 in. So what we're asking for on those is do what you can later this year. We're, okay. we're, we're trusting you to make the decision that this is something I can do for my library safely and this is something I can do to meet that that grant. Even the short time I've been doing this, my story times are on Thursday afternoons and these kids are still asking me, when are they starting back up? How come the I can't come? So I don't think I'll have a problem if I just do it all fall. But You're going to be fine. No, the brain is not. <laughs> um, yeah, well, and, and we all have a little bit of, we, we all have a little bit of Zoom fatigue. We also have COVID fatigue. And um, it's, it, I mean, we've used every word, unprecedented, unusual, strange, weird, whatever word. Um, there's, there's, you will, I hope that we never have to worry about these kinds of things in our lifetime again. But frankly, we never thought six months ago we would be worrying about them now. Um, we are preparing ourselves for a different kind of world. But um, I am confident in, in all of you that you're willing to reach out and say, hey, I don't know what I'm doing. What, what help can you provide? Um, because that's what we're here for. And CKLS, uh, uh, um, Mary Beth and I are both consultants and basically that just means um, come in and, and hang out and, and help you learn um, to do the best that you can do. Our situation is completely on suggestions. If you don't, um, if, if you don't like what you hear, you're certainly welcome to go a different direction. Um, we're just giving you what our best practices are. <coughs> and frankly, there are no best practices for COVID-19. Crystal and Laura, I just want to tell you girls, these women have been so awesome with me the past eight months. 
to get me through this and I ask the stupidest questions and the most lost questions. So don't be afraid. They are awesome. All of them. Gail spoke yesterday at the executive committee, which is the board for the CKLS. <laughs> that she is hopeful that um, consultings will begin some um, some consulting in person um, by the end of the summer. And so we will um, we will have that um, option available to you. And if you feel like you need programming consulting quicker than um, than the circle would go, then I'll come up twice if I have to. Um, don't worry about that. And then when it comes time to to do training on all of the cool stuff that we have at CKLS Youth Services, you can either come visit for a day or we can bring it all to you. We pack the van and we bring you the magic. So um, thank you for the, the nice words that you've, you've put in the chat. Um, if you have no other questions, I will let you get on with your day and don't hesitate to reach out individually um, to me by um, phone um, or by email. And if you need a if you need a face conversation, we'll set one up just with just with the two of us and 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 get you in a in a good place. Um, Tanya, I will commend you. I see a flyer. I see movement already at Baroque. Um, um, basically, now it's just going to be a matter of counting people. And and the other three of you, I I think you have um, some information to get you started now. But if you want to send a flyer and say, is this going to work? I'll send it back and say these are the things I still need. That's yeah. and I'm doing that with season with seasoned librarians who've been doing this for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's great. But I don't have your address. I don't know where to find you. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. And there's there's really no stupid question unless you don't ask it and then you get in trouble. So ask it. Because if you're wondering, there's also probably somebody else out there that's wondering. You may, may notice sometime that you call about a question and then you'll see an email that goes out to the CKLS Googles group about that exact thing. That's because we thought, if they're wondering that, somebody else is too. So please, please, please ask. Mayor Beth, should I get a hold of Andy about this camera? He's done been out to see me so many times this past week. <laughs> Yeah, go, uh, go ahead and get in contact. Hopefully it's something he can do remotely. I'm thinking it's some kind of permission between Zoom and your computer. And that's so, what it said, Zoom's not seeing a camera. Yeah, so I think it's something he can probably do remotely. You may have to connect to Zoom for him to play around. <laughs> so yeah, give him a call, he'll, he'll be able to help you out. Okay. <laughs> Crystal, who's your little one? This is Phoebe Josephine. Aww. Hi, Phoebe. <laughs> Hi, Phoebe. You I know Phoebe really likes your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many children do you have? She's my third. Okay. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old. So you're busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they go to work with you then? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> What a joy. And, and what's, um, th that was one of the things that surprised me um, about our, our uh, libraries when I moved to this territory. But I mean, in one library, we know that her children were raised in that library because she had five and the entire time that she worked there, she just kept adding them and, so they would come <laughs> along and take them, um, take that period of time while she was on maternity leave. And then she'd be back and there would be another baby underneath the desk. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so from the children's library standpoint, I'm just used to grabbing, you know, a, a mama who's falling asleep with the little one on her breast and I'm just grabbing the baby, grabbing the baby and carrying him around until mama wakes up because she's Because <laughs> mama needed a break. So, so thank you for joining us today. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to us and we hope that we've given you a little bit of a hint um, and then be looking for what the, um, the evaluation will look like and that will be an online link and you'll be able to look at that evaluation and there's a way to uh, print a PDF version of it so you know the questions that you're looking to answer. But basically you're looking for how many things that you did and who was in the room. And Phoebe wants hair. <laughs> Probably time for everybody to get up and get out of their chairs a little bit. Thank you for spending time with us today. Have a good day. I have a Thank question. Thank you again, awesome women. <laughs> and it's about reader zone okay Tanya, go ahead because um 
a couple of my people who signed up for Reader Zone have gotten an email from another library welcoming them to their reading program. Oh, okay. definitely a Jake problem. And then I've been getting emails from people saying, hey, Tanya, um, are we supposed to do this in it? And I'm like, and I explain it to them and they're not showing up on my thing as being logged into my thing. Oh, as your patron. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it is it okay that um, Diane and I um, try to join your program because sometimes that helps you see you can't you can't join under that email address you gave me. Okay. Unless you call him up and have him take you out because you've already been in in invited, and so and since the email didn't go out to you, you cannot sign up. Okay, send um send me the 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 code. Okay, the program code, and we're gonna see if it, because Diane and I both have other email addresses. We're gonna see if we can join your program, and and see if you get those messages because this is since this is outside, and then I'm going to um, get a hold of Alicia at the state library, and have her, and have her give you um a, a call and see if she can figure out, because she can move people around, because there are obviously you have people from other programs that are in yours, and people that should be in your program that are in somebody else's, and she can well, move people around. The, well, my, because it was one of my board directors, she has four kids, and she texted me when I put up the game board yesterday, because you can see it on Facebook, and she said, hey, Tanya, are you getting our stuff? Because I got this welcome to Reader Zone from another library for joining, you know, so. But I could see her stuff and, I, you know, and stuff like that. And I told her I could see her stuff. But I've had other questions from other people coming in. And I've answered them, but I don't see them signed up on my thing. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call Alice at the State Library and see if um, if if she can look through look through and see because I think on her backside she'll be able to see everybody that has received an invite and everybody that um, to to find the match to see which program they. Because I didn't, send, I didn't send out any invites on the computer deal because it won't, it wasn't let me because everyone that I invited, they had to take out because so all, everything we've done has been by flyers or through Facebook or, or anyone who's came got a book, I sacked in a flyer into their sack. Okay. With the program code on it. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I've, um, this, this learning is a, a little bit above me, so I'm going to call Alice and um, we're going to see what we can do to solve your problem since you've been, you're, you're a little, I don't know if it's your roll tell thing or what it is, but it has just been one challenge after another for your well, library. In the last couple of meetings, I keep on getting kicked off and it totally takes my whole system down and then time I get it back up, I'm at the end of the meetings. <laughs> Are you talking so. Zoom meetings? Well, like the Zoom meeting I was just on, I left. Well, it was because I got knocked off or something. I, the whole system totally went down. I had to re go into everything. It took everything off and took it back to Firefly. And I had to go and, cause it said nothing was available. So I had to go back in and reconnect to internet and everything. I don't know. Mary Beth, is that connectivity? That sounds like connectivity issues. Um, so I will I will let Annie know that you're having connection issues. Your um, internet provider is Next Tech, correct? Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, Tanya, hopefully between um, Andy and and Alice, maybe we can find you some answers and maybe make Reader Zone be a little uh, work a little better for you. Thank you for letting us know that you had problems. No problem. Thanks. Thank you. You all have a good day. Um, Mary Beth, I'm going to keep the meeting open for a little longer. Um, I'm going to invite in um, one of my 
uh, other consultant buddies. Okay. Um, so you can stop the recording and you can go and I